In this film, we will learn the terminology used when describing surfaces. Let's start by taking a look at the difference between geometry and topology. Geometry refers to the shape of the surface, whether that's a primitive or a complex nerve surface. Topology refers to the entities that make up the surface. These first two shapes have the same topology, one, two edges, and a surface. One, two edges, and a surface. These second two shapes have the same geometry, they're hemispherical, but different topology. This last face is built using only one edge and a surface. In surfacing, our object is to build each surface using the simplest topology we can. Let's move on to talk about normals. Any point on a surface has a normal vector. This can be thought of as a line pointing directly out from the surface at that point. The normal direction gives the surface its front and back. In this example, that's easier to see on these work planes that have a different color on the back than on the front. This can be useful to know when you're building complex surfaces in Inventor. Inventor uses the normal direction of surrounding surfaces as a guide to how it will build your next surface. Let's move on and take a look at curvature. Surface continuity describes the smoothness of a join between two edges. We'll cover this in more detail in a section on surface and curvature curve continuity, but I'd just like to remind you here about how that works. So I've created a loft here as a demonstration between two surfaces. This loft currently has G0 curvature continuity. G just stands for geometry. Zero just means that they touch, but no more. So they touch at this edge, and it touches at this edge, but there's no other relationship between these two surfaces. If I come in here and edit this surface, I'm in feature selection mode, so I can just double click. Under the conditions tab, I can choose the curvature I want at each joint. So currently I have a free condition, which is G0. I can choose here G1. G1 is tangency. So my two surfaces will touch and they will be tangent. So you can now see how that surface is taking off at a tangent condition to its original surface. The takeoff direction here just flips the tangency from one side to the other. For my second edge, I'm going to choose a G2 surface condition. G2 means it touches, tangent, and it has the same radius. So if I come sideways here, you should just be able to see that this surface has a slight curve, and my loft now takes off with the same curve at the point they touch. I'm going to choose OK to that, and I've pre prepared this zebra surface analysis. Let's activate that. And we can see here why this is important. I'm going to take us into view shaded mode. So we can just about see that where this edge is, our zebra analysis shows us there's a break across this edge. There's just a slight change in direction there. But if we come up here to our G2 joint, we can see almost no break there at all. That's almost completely smooth. So your surrounding surfaces and the condition you give where they meet is really important to the smoothness of your surface. For our final example, let's move on to isopalms. I'll activate this save view. So we have two surfaces here that have the same geometry, the same topology, but were built with two different tools. Every surface you create in Inventor is a boundary representation. It's a nerves-based surface. It essentially, this means it's a four-sided mesh. Now, this can be tricky when you've got three-sided shapes. One of these shapes has been built with the loft tool. One of these shapes has been built with the patch tool. Now I'm going to turn on the curvature analysis I've created for these shapes. What you can see here is this surface on the left has been built with a loft tool. These lines across here are known as isopalms. They're the U and V grid that Inventor creates to build this surface. It can be thought of as sections in my loft and rails. In this case, they're all pointing to this one edge. When the isopalms all point in like this, it's known as surface degradation. The point where they all come together is known as a singularity. This is bad news for Inventor. Essentially, all these isopalms are pointing to a point of infinite smallness, zero. There's a lot of math going on inside of zero here, and Inventor doesn't handle it particularly well. Not just Inventor, all surface modelers will have this problem. This surface over here, built with the patch command, has actually built a four-sided patch, which has then been trimmed back to the surface geometry. And actually, this is a pretty good method for building any kind of surface with Inventor. Now let's just demonstrate why this is important. If I come up here to my surface tools and choose extend, I can select the edges of this surface and we'll find that it extends pretty easily. 
so we can continue to work with this surface, it's not going to cause us any problems. If I try and do the same with my lofted surface, I'll right click, choose repeat extend. As I select these edges, we'll find that this just isn't going to build. There's no preview here. And when I hit OK, actually Inventor throws an error. I'm going to hit cancel there. And I'm just going to show you, I'll right click and choose extend surface again. This bottom surface here can actually be extended quite well because it's part of the four sided boundary representation. It's only here that we have a problem with the singularity. And it's really worth bearing this in mind when you're building these surfaces in order to make sure they're good and robust. In this film, we've looked at geometry, topology, surface normals, curvature continuity, isopalms, and surface degradation. All important concepts to acknowledge planning your surface models.